Hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're doing good. I'm doing great as always. Now today's video is really cool in that I get to show you guys the brand new, just announced Fujifilm X-H2S camera that has just been announced. Really neat little camera. You can see it's quite small, uh, quite little compact camera. And uh, yeah, I, uh, in this video, I'm going to go through my thoughts and feelings of using the camera as a portrait photographer and a street photographer. In a separate video, I will go through uh, and show you how I use it for action photography. Turned out to be really good for that as well. Uh, but basically right now we're just going to focus on my general thoughts on the camera, how I felt using it to shoot portraits. We, I got to go out for an hour with a model in downtown Tokyo in Shibuya. Um, but yeah, just um, the X-H2S, it's just been announced. So, you know, I'm not a really huge technical photographer, so I'm not going to go into all the little nits and crannies of the camera details. But there are a few things that I should point out, and I got a few notes here. So first off, uh, it's an X-Trans CMS 5HS sensor, has 26.16 megapixels, and has a uh, stack layer structure. You probably know what that means a lot better than I do. I come out of that saying, or hearing that it's a 26.16 megapixel sensor, which is really great. It's a good size, good, easy size to use. It's not too small for nowadays for using it professionally, and it's not so big that you have massive files to deal with, like say, the uh, Fujifilm GFX 100S or even my Nikon Z9 if I'm shooting raw uncompressed. So uh, I think it's the file sizes are really good uh, with this size sensor and it's really, I don't see a problem with it. Say a little bit more about this. This is uh, the first stacked APS-C sensor capable of a four times faster reading speed compared to the current model, which is the uh, X-Trans CMOS 4, which is on the uh, X-T4. So four times faster reading speed, which is pretty crazy. That is a big improvement. So, uh, you know, I, I think I saw that and then I'm shooting, but we'll go over it more. But yeah, big, big improvement. Also, the X Processor 5, which is the processor which you'll have in this camera, it's an all new processor, has double the processing speed of the current model, which is the X Process 4, obviously, which is in the X-T4. So, wow, okay, they're doubling the processing speed of the the processor in here, which is awesome. Uh, it'll be really, really good for when shooting action sports photography, say, um, or when shooting uh, really fast-paced portraits and stuff like that, and you're really taking a lot of images all at once, you need that fast processor to go through the images and uh, use it. So that's, that's cool, that's a really good improvement. Another thing that the camera has is a combination of a mechanical and a sh electronic shutter within the camera. Uh, with, the, with either one that you're using, you get basically zero blackout when you're shooting so i've shot this camera anywhere from you know single shots to up to 40 frames per second on the electronic shutter and no blackout which is really nice you always want to be able to see what's moving in front of your camera at all times even if you're doing a huge burst of images in that you need to be able to follow your subject or follow your model and things like that so zero blackout uh really nice really really super nice i remember using old fujifilm cameras that had really bad blackout um, and I just couldn't use it for my action photography or anything really, I didn't like it. Um, and this has like, I just, you know, I tried it again just before shooting and it has virtually, if none, blackout. So that's really awesome. Okay, so they've really bumped up the autofocus capabilities of this camera. Um, they've added a lot of really good autofocus to the face and to the eyes, um, which is great when shooting portraits and that sort of thing. But they've also added some custom menus. So I'm just looking at here, you can do animal, bird, automobile, motorcycle or bike, airplane, and even trains. You know, a lot of people really like taking pictures of trains here in Japan, so that's kind of cool. But it's kind of neat to have this kind of option. This is, seems to be something that a lot of camera companies are coming out with. With the Nikon Z9, it seemed like a lot of bird phot uh, photographers were really, really excited with the new autofocus capabilities of that. So it'll be interesting to see online how people who shoot, say, cats or dogs or birds, find the autofocus on this. And also they have a newly designed EVF in this camera. And uh, this, I'm not, like I said, technical, so I'm just gonna read this straight out. 0.8X, 5.76 million dots, 120 FPS EVF. So you have 120 frames per second on the EVF, which is really nice and smooth. It's really good for anybody moving or anything like that. It just gives you like a really nice natural view while you're looking through the viewfinder. So I found it really nice to use. And they just say it's a brand new optic design to suppress distortion and chromatic aberration, making for a very clear viewing experience of the photographer. And I found it to be very clear and useful and definitely not something that impeded me while I was shooting at all. So yeah, those are the general specs of the camera. I'm not gonna get too into it too much right now. I'll talk a bit more after our little session video here, but uh, yeah. So I went down to Shibuya with the camera. Um, Fujifilm was also kind enough to lend me uh, 
two lenses. I got the uh, 50 mil 140, which is a 2.8 millimeter lens, which is, uh, you know, great for all around stuff. Good for, for portrait shooting and all that kind of thing. And then they also sent me a nice 35 mil 1.4, which was fun to use, nice and light, uh, really fit well on the camera here, good balance. And yeah, these two lenses I used in the shoot quite a bit. So yeah, check out our shoot in Shibuya uh, with the model, um, and I'll come back in a second and tell you a little bit more details about how I felt using the camera. Cheers. So now, uh, just you know, my general thoughts about the camera and using it uh, as a portrait camera in a portrait session in a real, you know, real situation. So first off, you know, anytime you pick up a camera, first thing you're gonna notice is the weight, the build, the size. Uh, so yeah, this uh, what X H2S is really compact, really nice size, fits in my hand quite well. I don't get the pinky on there. So me, myself, I would maybe want to get, an, the, if they have one, uh, a little extender for the battery in that to have at the bottom of the camera, just because my hands are, you know, they're not small. Uh, but it's light. It's much lighter than my Z9, I think, or my D5. Um, so it was really like no issue there for weight or size. Um, the build is great. It's nice and sturdy. Fujifilm always has great sturdy cameras. It doesn't feel any plasticky or anything like that. I'm sure if you pick it up and get a chance to hold it, you'll feel that it's a nice, good, good size, good sturdy camera to use for sure. Like it's, I really can't think of anything negative to say about the build or the size of the camera. I'm sure a lot of people really like this size of camera for sure. So I had the camera set up with uh, the face detect and the zone on there for the autofocus. Uh, but you know, I really didn't need that on there. The camera was picking up her eye, her face really, really well. Every time I was shooting, maybe, you know, I had the zone set to the top of the frame by holding the camera like this, and then I flipped it over so now the zone was on the bottom, but the camera still jumped on her face right away, picked it up perfectly, and I got, basically I think every shot I took was in focus. Like I didn't lose any images the whole day. 
I'm pretty sure. So that was great. It made it really fun. I didn't have to worry about like double checking the focus or anything like that. Like I checked it a couple times and it looked good and it looked like the it was focusing on her eye. So I just kept shooting and having fun and trying to build a rapport with the, the model. And uh, I didn't really have to be like, you know, staring at my camera every five seconds to double check the focus, which just gives you like so much confidence when you're shooting that you know your camera's doing its job. So it was really great. I just, it made shooting so much more fun. Now there are other options you can use such as wide tracking and all area kind of thing on here, which I think the all would have worked well as well uh, for what we are doing with just a single model uh, in front of my camera. So the camera's AI is really just, it's not magic. There is computer stuff going on and it's not perfect. So when it's a single model, that would great. But when, uh, I think if you had a situation where there was multiple people, say we were at a busy intersection and I was trying to focus on the model and I was using the all or like wider uh, area, um, I think the camera might have had a little bit more trouble picking up the person I wanted to shoot because it's not a mind reader. It doesn't obviously know exactly the person in the image that I want to focus on. So in those situations, using the zone or single point and keeping your uh, focus point on your model while moving, you'll lock it on. And then you can move the camera around if you're still focusing or shooting. You should track them quite well, um, but just be aware of the different modes that are on there and the situation that you're shooting in. The AI in any camera is not perfect. So if you're shooting just you and the model, I think pretty much any of the, the tracking and any of the uh, focus modes will work great. It's when you get more people, say in the background, you're at a busy skate park or you're, like I said, a busy intersection in that, uh, it might, get confused and go to other people. I had this happen a couple times in the skate park, but then all I did was put it into zone, bring that zone down a little bit, uh, depending on the size I was, uh, the, the size of the frame that I was trying to get for the image. And then just give the camera a little bit of an extra helping hand to say, hey, I want you to focus in this area. And in this area, there's only one person, so just focus on him. But adding the zone and being able to move that around and use it just to remind the camera of where you want to shoot if it's necessary, it's a good thing. I think it worked really well when I was shooting and uh, yeah, it was, I didn't really need it in the portrait shooting, but uh, in the video where I talked about action sports, I did use it a couple times and it worked much better. So yeah. But again, you know, saying that we didn't miss any of the shots I took in the, with just me and her. So for myself in the type of shooting I was doing that day, it worked amazing. It was really, really good. Someone coming from, you know, my Z9 has the face detection, which I'm slowly getting used to. But anytime I use a camera that it works really, really well on, it's still magic to me. It just, it's like, oh, this is so much easier as my other cameras in the past maybe didn't work as well as I would hope or didn't, you know, just didn't track as well as you'd want them to. So yeah, it works great for what I was doing. Um, maybe somebody will be able to break it and figure out a situation where it doesn't work at all. But you know, what I was doing, it was awesome. Now, uh, one thing with this camera is it does have a flip out screen here, an articulating, I guess you could call it, because you can spin it in pretty much any direction you want. My Z9 has a screen as well, which I've been using a lot. So I'm slowly getting used to actually having a screen that's flip out of outable on the camera. And I must say it is invaluable for what I do. I love having these flip out screens on here. Now this one actually is much more moverable, uh, much more, uh, what? I can move it around a lot more than say my Z9. So you can see here, you can actually turn the screen full 180 degrees around. So if you want, you can, do some vlogging or something like that. Maybe have it a bit on a tripod and just have it out there and you can actually see yourself on the screen. Can't do that with my Z9, so that's great. The other thing is I can actually close it, which is nice to just be able to put it away. Maybe you're gonna put your camera in your bag and you don't wanna scratch the LCD screen. Great option to be able to just flip it around and close it out. And sometimes you just don't wanna see it when you're shooting, you don't care. So it's having it, being able to close it away is really, really good. And yeah, just being able to put it basically at any angle you want, shooting straight above, shooting like straight down, having it like at chest level in that. It just really helps. It just makes you more mobile, adds to the angles you can shoot and actually see. Like this was basically an impossible angle for me. Even with my Z9, I can't quite get this, you know, shooting food or shooting off a balcony from straight above something. Really, really helpful to be able to do this. Saying that, um, you know, the build isn't bad, but this is one point of contact on the camera. So say you have it out and you're running around trying to get a shot or you're getting excited or you hit something. Uh, I'm not sure how much this can take. So you're going to want to be careful. It doesn't, it's not flimsy and by any means, yeah, you're going to want to be careful with this because if you smash that, it's going to come right off. I'm pretty sure. Kudos to Fujifilm for putting this on here. I love these things now. I cannot, I will never buy a camera that does not have one of these on it. And I'm sure once you get one, a lot of professional, professional photographers really kind of crap on uh, 
having a fold outable screen, but really, once you get used to it, like geez, this thing, being able to go down like this and shoot at my waist instead of kneeling down, that's gonna save my knees like so much. I squat all day, every day when I'm shooting. And just being able to do this and shoot like this instead of kneeling down, squatting down, uh, I'm gonna love it. After a day of shooting, I'll just be that much less tired and it'll be so much nicer. So yeah, great, I love it. Uh, well, like I said, never buy a camera without one of those on it ever in my life. So at the moment, unfortunately, I'm not able to actually edit any of the raw images I took, uh, but I was able to edit the JPEGs and I'm quite happy to say that they turned out great, really. You know, they have a nice Fujifilm look to them. Um, if we look at a couple of the images that I got on the day of shooting, um, just kind of bring them up here. Great color. I have edited these, but, um, you know, great depth, great color, um, great detail. Going into 100% here. You know, great detail on the eyes here. Um, it looks really clean. All these images, you know, there's like great detail even in the rain here. Pretty sure I'm shooting at like 1.4 uh, or 2.8 there. Let's see, 2.8. Yeah, so I'm at the uh, the 104 or the the 140 lens there. So yeah, it's um it looks great. I really, you know, I can't really uh, complain about even the JPEG quality of these images. They look really nice. Great detail in her hair. Great uh, fade off with the bokeh here on the on the right. Um, so yeah, like I mean, if you bought this and would only shoot JPEGs with it, which I would never do, I would shoot raw. But even the JPEGs coming out of this camera are beautiful. Like uh, just so much nice clean detail in her face and that, and then the bokeh comes off, and uh, this looks great. Um, you know, I seem to be overly positive on a lot of t <laughs> a lot of my videos, but I really can't find anything I don't like about this. Uh, I worked great with the natural light. I didn't have a, didn't use my strobe, so it was working great with the natural light. The highlights, nothing's blown out here. Um, even these images, the nice darkness around there, and the detail in her hair and her eyes here is just amazing. And I think this one is uh, 1.4, so it's super sharp. Yeah, like. The image quality of this camera is really, really nice. It looks great. I don't think you have to worry about that at all. Um, I would, I'm really looking forward to seeing what more I could do with the RAWs, how much more I can maybe push them, bringing up the shadows and bringing down the highlights and that. But in general, it looks great. I really like how they turned out. And uh, I would be really kind of more than happy just shooting JPEGs as well, which is something I don't normally do or say. But uh... now, after doing our portrait session in uh, Shibuya, I still had a little bit of time in my day. So I handed over to Shinjuku and did a little bit of street shooting. Um, like, you know, I do quite a bit of street shooting in my own private time. And uh, a little smaller compact camera like this, say with like uh, the 35 millimeter lens or some other prime shorter lens, like a 50 or something like that, is awesome to use, tons of fun, makes it super light and easy. And this camera was great for that. It's compact size. Uh, the flip out screen helps you get down to puddles. Like um, I can throw some of the shots up on the screen here, but you know, getting really down low to puddles and having the reflections in there was really easy to do. Uh, it's not a large super size camera, so people don't get kind of like turned away if you kind of turn the camera to them. Being able to shoot with the screen like this down at your hips also kind of like hides the camera away from people's line of sight. Really great. Using the uh, electronic shutter and getting up to 40 frames per second with this camera is kind of nice when shooting in the street because you just need to get like that, that shot now and just and spray. Don't pray, but spray and plan ahead and hopefully you get a decent shot. But it's just nice to have that option. So this is great. Uh, I think anybody who's shooting street photography who is looking to upgrade maybe wants a bit of a bigger sensor or more frames per second, things like that, that can help you get a better image in the long run. Uh, this is great. It worked out really, really well. And I really like the images I got. They're just some fun ones, but uh, uh, yeah, it was fun. And I kind of wish I had more time and get out on a different day and shoot more of it, just street. So yeah, that's basically um, my first impressions of the X-H2S um, for portrait photography and for a little bit of street photography. Uh, just to go over what I talked about, uh, great camera, great build, nice size, decent weight, but not heavy. Uh, the autofocus for face detection worked amazing. The EVF was clear, 120 frames per second with the EVF is great. No blackout when shooting, which is amazing. You can just not even worry about things and just keep shooting. Even when your model is moving around, you can see everything. So it was awesome with that. Love the flip out screen. I will never buy a camera without a flip out screen on it again. <laughs> Uh, and although I can't do the RAWs right now, um, the JPEGs look great. 
great sensor. I love the image, uh, the images that come out of Fujifilm cameras. It has that nice Fujifilm look to it, and this camera definitely has that. And yeah, all in all, uh, the camera was great. It just made it so I could have a lot of fun, enjoy my shooting, and there was really nothing I found that stalled me, made me take extra time to, to shoot or anything like that. It was just uh, really well done and uh, really easy to use. So great, awesome Fujifilm. I think you guys did great with the X, X-H2S. And uh, yeah, if you know, I don't know the exact price that this is going to be sold at, but uh, that'll come out with the announcements as well. But I'm pretty sure it'll be not not too crazy. It's it'll be a fairly affordable camera. So uh, if you're just getting into photography and you like Fujifilm or you want to update, uh, yeah, this will be a great camera for you, I'm sure. So cheers, thanks guys, uh, thanks always. I'm actually over 800 subscribers right now, which is amazing. Really didn't think I'd get that far on this YouTube channel, but it's super cool. So thank you very much. Any comments or questions about the camera you guys might have, just hit me up. And uh, yeah, I'll be coming out with a video about my action sports photography uh, trial shooting with this camera as well in the next day or two. Just have to edit it. Cheers. Thanks and good shooting.